A man with a semi-automatic weapon is sleeping in his hammock, but suddenly wakes up and heads over to a camp where more guerrilla soldiers are relaxing. He takes a walk into the woods to relieve himself, but when he's done, he notices a sort of muzzle that has been discarded on the ground. As he ventures farther into the woods, he pulls out his lighter to illuminate the opening, but suddenly he gets caught up in what seems to be quicksand. He's quickly pulled down under the ground, and the last thing we hear is his scream. Later, we meet a man named Papa, and he finds an antique weapon on a skeleton in a cave. And outside, we see that he's actually part of an expedition, led by a man named Warren. Warren is excited to find a World War II bunker like this one, but Su Ling isn't as impressed. Another member of the group, Stanley, looks out over the horizon, and he feels uneasy about something. Suddenly, Papa screams from inside the bunker, and he plays a joke on the others by shoving the skull out to everyone else. After seeing Papa's antics, Warren goes to Captain Prawa to question the professionalism of his men, but he's assured that Papa didn't mean anything by his joke. Rai reminds them that they are there to explore instead of desecrating graves. Rai and Warren head inside to explore, but Su Ling decides to stay outside with the men. Once inside, Rai finds an interesting marking, and it holds her attention over everything else. Outside, Stanley tells Captain Prawa about his uneasy feeling, but he is positive that he and his men can handle anything that comes their way. Rai tells Warren that they're close to what they're looking for, and the group continues to the coordinates that they originally intended to travel to. After walking for some time, they manage to find a rusty door hidden in the earth, and Rai tells them that they've made it. To the door to hell, maybe. Papa opens the door, and Stanley tells them that this is a dead mine from 1942. Warren tells them that this mine, in particular, was repurposed, and it is the reason they're all here today. Stanley tells them that he wants to check the mine, to make sure it's safe since he notices signs of seismic activity, and Warren tells him to get in. Before starting, Stanley asks Rai why she's working with Warren, and she says that she's here to get her own answers about the mindset of killer soldiers. Stanley decides to give her a crash course in how soldiers are repurposed into killing machines, and he heads inside. While the group waits on Stanley, Su Ling listens to Warren talk about how the other guys don't respect him. But suddenly, the group is fired on by the guerrilla pirates. Prawa and his men fire back, but soon, they fall back inside the mine. Sadly, a grenade makes it inside just as Ario gets to the opening, and it collapses the opening on his legs, leaving them trapped inside. Some of the men tend to Ario and his wounds. Prawa and Stanley weigh their options and decide that their best bet is to move deeper inside the mine and hope that there's another way out. Before they keep going, they go to Warren to find out what he's looking for here. Warren tells them that they had discovered coded papers that led them to believe legendary gold and treasure from World War II was kept in the mine. The group heads deeper into the mine, but soon, they come to another semi-collapsed part of the path. Stanley crawls in first, and he gives the okay for them to keep going. After going down some stairs, the group comes across a rickety wooden bridge with railway tracks on them, and they slowly creep across. Suddenly, the electricity cuts on, and the old Japanese war song starts playing when the music cuts off. Su Ling tries to call out to whoever might be in there, and Stanley thinks that the pirates found another way in to mess with them. As they continue, they come across an old storeroom that housed supplies for the war and it becomes clear that Prawa is a little jumpy when he shoots at old masks on the wall. After making sure the area is clear, Rai and Warren start investigating what's lying around. Rai finds some old pictures of starving prisoners, and she packs them away in her bag before moving on. Eventually, Stanley comes across a sign that warns people to wear gas masks, but he keeps this discovery to himself. Further along, they find an old communications room, and Rai and Warren seem to notice something good on the wall. While Papa stands guard in the hall, he doesn't notice a sinister figure standing behind him. Warren tells the guys that they should be close to the treasure, but Stanley wants to know why he feels uneasy here, 
Rai decides to tell everyone the truth. This mine was used to test biological and chemical warfare on live human subjects. No one seems happy to learn about this. Full disclosure would have been nice before signing on to this trip. Eventually, they find the sleeping quarters, and they lay Ario down on one of the beds. Prawa decides that he and Papa are going to move forward alone to find a quicker way out, but Warren thinks that he just wants to find the gold on his own. Prawa isn't one to argue, though, and he lets Warren and Su Ling tag along. Before going their separate way, Prawa gives Stanley Papa's sidearm, and they say their goodbyes for now. Rai sits down with Stanley and asks him why he stopped being a soldier, and he tells her he was disgusted with his previous killing mindset and even more upset that he used to enjoy it. Prawa and his group continue checking rooms on their way down, and they find more evidence that supports the claims of POW testing. Meanwhile, Ario hears scuffling coming from somewhere nearby, and he sits up to get a better look at his surroundings. Suddenly, the dirt under his bed starts to shift, and hands reach up to grab him down into a tunnel. When the others look down, they find a strange man adorned with a muzzle. They head down into the tunnels to search for Ario. Joko pushes ahead on his own, while Stanley and Rai stick together. They can hear scuffling and chains all throughout the tunnels, and Joko spots one at the end of the tunnel. He chases after the strange man, when Rai goes another way to find Ario's dead body. When they turn around to go, Stanley ends up getting knocked out by a blunt object to the head. Back up to the mine. Prawa and the others find another large chamber that holds medical notes and research from the POW experiments. While they look through the findings, Joko continues deeper into the tunnels looking for Ario, but he's soon grabbed by one of the beings and dropped into a large dumping ground. When one of the beings pops up, Joko takes it down and gets a better look at it. Soon, another being pops up and disarms Joko. The two of them struggle, and Joko manages to finish this one off with his bare hands. Not before it blinds him, though. Now, Joko blindly holds his sidearm up to ward more beings away, but he can't see that he's being surrounded. After a moment, he simply throws his sidearm down and gives up. Can't say we blame him. Prawa and his group end up getting locked inside a chamber, and Stanley wakes up to a masked man yelling at him and Rai. The man tells them that they're prisoners of the Japanese Imperial Army, and he won't listen to Rai telling him that the war is over. Stanley manages to get the jump on him, and he takes the man's mask off to find that he's deformed as well. It turns out that the man has been down here for 70 years, and he refuses to surrender. Rai pulls out her tablet and shows him footage of the Japanese surrender after the war, and the soldier cries over his dead friend who's on the bed. Back in the locked chamber, Prawa and Papa try to open the door, but Warren is attacked by one of the beings. Prawa shoots it, but that only enrages the being. Papa manages to stop it by ramming it with rebar, and they turn their attention to Warren's wound. When Rai and Stanley ask the soldier what happened to his friend, they find out that he killed him because he wanted to surrender. When they asked about the beings, he tells them that they are the prisoners whom were being tested on. In the locked chamber, Prawa finds words etched on the being's head, and Warren reads that this is one of the POWs. Rai also finds out that the Japanese soldiers were given injections to keep them young and strong, and he tells them that they were just another failed experiment as well. It turns out that they perfected the formula, though, and gave it to an Imperial Guard. Meanwhile, Warren finds the legendary gold. It's actually the substance that the soldiers had been using to test on the POWs. Of course, Su Ling thinks that this weaponized gold can be worth more than the gold would have been on its own. Just then, Prawa and Papa manage to open one of the doors, and they step inside what looks to be a sumo ring. Lights pop up in the warehouse, and they find the weaponized Imperial Guard waiting for them. Prawa and Papa open fire but it doesn't phase them one bit. Prawa tells Su Ling and Warren to run into the tunnels, but Papa gets run through by the guard. Warren and Su Ling manage to escape, and Prawa follows them after seeing that Papa didn't make it. Eventually, 
they make it to the body dump grounds, and once they realize where they are, they try to back out. They end up getting attacked before they can escape, and they manage to take out two of them. Finally, they make it back to Stanley and Rye. Before they head out, Su Ling decides to inject Warren with the gold formula, but the Imperial Guard bursts out of the tunnel. The old soldier decides to sacrifice himself to redeem his actions, and he buys everyone time to run. Down in the tunnels, more Imperial Guard members free the beings of their muzzles, and they chase after the survivors. While Rai helps the men fight off the beings, Su Ling locks herself and Warren in the room with the escape tunnel. Prawa and the others make a break down the hallway, and they wind up getting cornered in a room. Rai opens a hole in the floor that leads to the tunnels, and Prawa stays behind to hold the door for as long as possible. Meanwhile, Su Ling and Warren make it to the outside by taking the tunnel. Finally, Prawa loses his strength, and the Imperial Guard take him out. Just before Su Ling can get Warren out of the tunnel, he seems to change, and he knocks her head on the wall repeatedly. Rai and Stanley find themselves in a chamber full of water. Stanley urges her to keep going, and soon Rai finds herself surfacing outside in a small water hole. She calls out for Stanley, but unfortunately an Imperial Guard is next to surface, followed by more. Defeated and out of energy, Rai lays at the mercy of the Imperial Guardsman, who swings his katana at her, ending the movie. The concept of this film is intriguing, and it was masterfully pulled off a touch of claustrophobia with a pinch of history horror. And that wraps up this recap. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this recap, please subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss a single video.